Call to order. All right, and I will read the checklist. Uh, as chair of the Sanborn Regional School Board's Excellence in Student Achievement Subcommittee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are A, providing public access to the meeting by telephone, with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of the Sanborn Regional School Board's Excellence in Student Achievement Subcommittee have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate in this meeting through dialing the following phone number, 1-646-558-8656 meeting ID 916-4737-5330, or by clicking on the following website address, www.youtube.com slash C slash SRSD meeting videos. B, providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting, including how to access the meeting using Zoom or telephonically, Instructions have also been provided on the website of the Sanborn Re Regional School District at www.siu17.net. C, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please call 603-642-541 or email at helpdesk at siu17.net. D, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Okay. Okay, uh, Don. Don Dutton. I am currently at the Swayze Gymnasium in Kingston. Uh, there are lots of people here, but there is no one around me. Jamie? Well, I am not. I am at home <laughs> in my office alone. Jamie Fitzpatrick. Patty? Patty Haynes in my office at the SAU by myself. Uh, Matt? Matt Malilla at home alone. Ryan? Ryan McCluskey at home in a room by myself. Okay, uh, Tammy Mahoney, I'm uh, in, at home also by myself down here. Okay, um, are we, which, do you, which agenda item do you wanna, do you wanna start with number two? Are we still waiting for some people to discuss number one, or item number one, which is the report card item? So the report card item I could start with, I didn't know, did you need to approve minutes first or? Oh, oh I, should read. I should read my agenda, shouldn't I? Yes, thank you. That is actually on the agenda. So let's do that. <laughs> um, motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Uh, Jamie, all in favor, Jamie? Aye. Don? Aye. And I for me as well, thank you. Okay. All right. Mr. Snyder, I see you've joined. I think I yeah, think I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Gotta find unmute. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, could you let us know where you are and if there's anyone around? Yes. No, I'm in my office here at Bakey School alone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, Patty, I guess I'll leave it to you to decide which. Yeah, we, we can start with uh, item one, which would be okay. going over the ALMA reporting system and talking about that a little bit. 
Um, and I thought what I would do is, since this is recorded, um, we would go over the whole system, a little bit about what parents could expect to see, talk a little bit about um, the sample that we've actually created that would be the goal for us for next year. Now that we've got the system up and running this year, like I said uh, in previous meetings, we're learning more stuff about the system and, and the things that it can do every every day. All, all the time there's new things that we're learning and they're adding new components and new uh, capabilities. So this year is really a learning year for us. So we're really working toward um, a better sample in the future. And what I would do um, for that is in the chat, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a file um, for everybody to take a look at while we're going through this. And I'm also going to um, pull it up on the screen, but just so everybody's now got that file, it's called the ISA sample. Um, so I just dumped it into chat. And what I'll do is I'll pull that sample up. And like I said, this is, I'm just gonna share my screen. This is something that we're aspiring to um, for our report card for next year. We still have things that we're working on. And you see this is student name is up at the top, Xavier sample. And there'd be a little box that gives information about the report cards. And one of the things I wanted to um, really emphasize in this meeting today is that the report card is really an overview. And when Tom and I discussed what this should look like and, and what he's been hearing from parents and community members about what they wanna look for in a report card is it needs to be simple. And he said that several times, simple, give me the information, um, just the facts kind of stuff. And if there's more information that's wanted, folks should be heading toward the Alma portal. And I'm gonna walk folks through how to do that and we've got a sample family, um, which Kevin Harrington nicely set up for me. He's somebody in IT and we had some fun with that. So we'll go through that in a little bit, but it's just a sample. It's an overview for how the child is doing at a snapshot in time. Really with the way we do grades now with Alma portal, information gets put in all the time. So a report card really just gives you a snapshot. And what we would do is this looks a little different than what some families have already received because like I said, we want to simplify it. So it would be an overview grade in this blue box here. This is just a sample, so there are no grades, but there would be an overview grade in here for what that child, Xavier sample, is getting in those classes. And we've got a couple of classes doubled up um, because maybe they have health with two different teachers, same thing with phys ed, but it would go through and list all of the grades here. It would just be an overview grade. Second page, which would be the backside, the rest of the courses, and then the behavior grades in here, which are our work study practices, assertion, cooperation, empathy, responsibility, self-regulation and control. And this is an elementary school sample that we pulled up um, just to give folks an overview. It would just be an overview, general comments here, and then a location for parents to sign it. It's something that would give folks an entry point to conversations about how the student is doing. The, Report card really is a vehicle for communication between home and school. But the nice thing about Alma and going to this system from kindergarten all the way through grade 12 is all the parents, regardless of what grade the child is in, can go into the portal and take a look at their child's progress. So this report card, when it comes home, really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be just a moment in time for how that child is doing. And we definitely still need these at the end of the marking periods, at the end of the school year, or say a child and their family is leaving here and moving to Kansas and they need hard copies. We're going to need those things still. But the main um, emphasis for Alma as we move into it even more robustly for the rest of the year and next year is to really look at it as an entire system. So I'm going to stop the share here and we can go back to this in a little bit. And I'm going to pull up um, and walk through how parents could get into the system. So let me just get myself situated here. Back to sharing my screen. So here we are on the district website and parents received letters at the beginning of the year. I'm, I'm saying beginning of the year, probably was around October when we got this started. Um, for how to log in. And there's a couple of ways to do that. The easiest way is to navigate to your child's school. And this fictitious family that was created happens to have a child at Bakey. So we're gonna navigate to Bakey. And on the quick links bar for Bakey, 
way at the bottom, it says Alma Parent Link. When you click on that, it brings you to the portal for parents. And you're going to see here, here's the parent, Morticia Adams, which Kevin Harrington gave us the Adams family to look at how those, that child is doing. And Morticia would go in here and put her password in and you log in. And as a parent, this is what you would see. And this is just a mock-up. So this really isn't going to give you the full experience, but for our purposes, it's going to help us understand what's going on. It tells us today is a school day, and because this really isn't tied to a real teacher and a real calendar, it would maybe say things in here about what's happening that day. And here's all of Morticia's students. Well, this just happens to be Pugsley. And if she wants to see how he's doing, she would click on his name. And there's overview about school attendance not taken because this isn't a real day, but it would tell how his attendance is, how many days he's been absent, how many days he's been late, early dismissal, things like that. And there are a few other tabs here. There's a to do tab. And here's where the parents could look to see upcoming assignments. Teachers could enter those assignments ahead of time. And it says right in here, here's an upcoming assignment, February 11th, which would be something due tomorrow. And the test just is the name of the class. Um, and it's geography, create a map. Well, if the parent wants to know what's going on with this, they could click on this and the assignment details will come up. And so here's his teacher happens to be Gomez Adams. So it's a small town, I guess. Um, <laughs> and it gives you the due date, which is the 11th. And it tells you what the assignment is. Create a map of a town. Be sure to include a compass rose and landmarks in the town. Your landmark should be the post office, library, supermarket, and movie theater. Write a paragraph that tells using cardinal directions where the four landmarks are in relation to each other. So mom has an idea of what's coming up for Pugsley for one assignment that could be listed there. So you could close that and you could now go and look at his classes. So how is he doing in his classes? And this just, this could be English or math or whatever. Each, each one of the classes would be listed for everything that the child is taking. But in this case, because we wanted a quick mock-up, we've got a test class. So we're gonna see how Pugsley's doing in his te test class. And so by clicking on that class, it gives you the term two, which is what we're in at Bakey. Here are all of the competencies that are listed and color coded, it shows how Pugsley's doing for each of his assignments. So here's the first assignment that was given on the fourth. It was a shapes test. As a parent, I can click on this and it'll give me the shapes test. It tells me what that competency was that he was graded on, reasoning with shapes and their attributes, and he scored a P. And if I don't know what that is, there's a grading key up in the corner, which we'll take a look at in a bit. And the teacher gave feedback. Nice job identifying the difference between squares and rectangles. Please continue to work on the types of triangles, especially the difference between isosceles and scalene. So just some feedback that the teacher would write in there. Now, not every teacher is going to write feedback for every single assignment, but there will be some feedback that goes in there as well as a grade. So I'm going to close that. And here's the grading key, just in case we don't remember what the letters are. P is proficient, so that's doing well. And you can see that there's a mastery level here. Each time that the child has that competency assessed, that mastery level will change. So the more times that it's assessed, it's going to show the teacher whether or not that child understands those concepts that are under that competency. Here's another competency, multiply and divide within 100. And you notice with this one, there are three yellow boxes. Two of them are tied to two different assignments, multiplying large numbers and multiplication word problems. The mastery level is in IP, which is in progress. And by clicking on the assignment, I can see the feedback and I can see the teacher says, you should spend some time again on your seven and eight facts. So as a parent, I know that Pugsley's having some problems with multiplying sevens and eights. Multiplication word problems, we will practice the important information together. In progress, Pugsley's struggling with that. Here's the assessment or the um, assignment for the geography compass rows. And we see that the competency says identify and use cardinal directions on a compass rows to locate places on a map, which goes with the assignment that is due tomorrow. Now down here, here's some competencies in writing. Writing narratives, 
and with guidance, writing and in, in, uh, developing, developing and organizing task and purpose. And that was assessed with this piece of class, we're going to a state park. Here's the scores for the two competencies that were assessed. Here's the teacher's feedback. And what's nice here is we actually have a sample rubric attached and we have Pugsley's writing sample, which was uploaded. So students could be uploading samples, could be attaching things, the teacher could be moving things over. So if I look at the rubric as a parent, I can see what Pugsley was graded on. This will give me some idea. And this is just, again, a dummy sample. I put something in for us to look at. And I can actually look at Pugsley's writing sample. Oh yeah, look, here's his work. And I can read what was handed in. So these are all options that teachers can use for different kinds of work. Writing samples might be easier to upload than math sheets that are located in a workbook. But those are all kinds of different examples of things that parents could look for as they're going into the system. And the thing to remember is this is an entire system. So that's giving me a lot more information than that example report card that we started with earlier. And so I can go back now to the home button. This takes me back. I can go back and look at Pugsley. Here are his classes. It will give me his attendance. All of these would be color coded on absent, late or present days if this was a real student in a real class. And if any of the report cards were generated, I could look at them here and they would all be stored here over time. So what we would find are these little boxes with first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, that whole situation. And then up here in the upper corner, it says message teachers. So I could click on that and I could write to his teacher, whether all of his teachers, let's say he had more than just one or just two is one teacher. And I could write an email saying, um, multiplication facts, and I could write the teacher a question, you know, can you give me some examples on how I can help my son at home or things like that? And it'll send you a copy and you send that to the teacher and they'll get it right in their regular email. They don't have to log in to Alma separately to pull emails from two different places. This will go directly to that child's teacher and they can find that and answer it quickly. You could even message the teacher here about field trips or lunch money or you know, did my son leave his trumpet in the in the classroom over the vacation kind of a thing. So any of those kinds of things could be sent here. You don't have to go and try to find a separate way to email teachers. You can do it straight from this system. So I think that pretty much gives us an overview of what the parent can see um, from the parents end and just up here would be where the teacher would log out. There's also uh, places for here for um, if the, the parent wanted some additional help and things like that. So I'm just going to stop sharing and we can have a conversation about that sort of overview. And maybe Ryan and Chris and Christine could speak and maybe Matt a little bit about things that are happening um, in the building as far as Alma and grading and things like that go. Sure, I'll jump in real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, no, I mean, as far as Alma goes, um, you know, their teachers, honestly, as Patty has said a number of times, teachers are building comfort level, um, you know, each passing week as far as um, getting assignments in. Um, we, we use kind of, I think Patty may have come up with the acronym or someone recently came up with the, with the kind of the, the little phrase or jingle that, you know, payday Thursday, you know, every two weeks we're, we're entering those grades so that, you know, the feedback the parents are getting is up to date as, as much as reasonable. Um, you know, and, and certainly I, I think, thank you, Patty, for, for sharing what you did um, with regards to the, the, honestly, it, it's night and day compared to what we're using with, with all the stuff that Alma can do. And, mm -hmm. and just to reemphasize what Patty was saying, you know, there's, there's a lot of options out there, you know, you're, we're going to see what's going to fit and work for us as we fully implement it. Um, but there certainly are a lot more options than what we were using in the past with Pinnacle. Right. I, from Bakey's perspective, I would echo a lot of what Ryan just said. Um, our teachers are gaining comfort level with inputting grades, um, kind of establishing that pattern routine as how frequently they need to go in. Um, 
one of the greatest assets about Alma is the fact that it can be so tailored to what we need. So I'm sure, you know, we'll make adjustments as we need to as we go in, but, but seeing the parent portal is extremely helpful. So we know exactly, you know, if a parent does call us with questions, you know, we have that ability um, to, to walk them through and, and do some of that troubleshooting as well. So I know there's some upcoming training that some of our front office staff will be a part of here very soon. Um, and what I like about this is that it's integrated or it will be eventually integrated with our student information system piece too. So that's, it'll all become uh, just part of what we do here and teachers I'm sure will become far more comfortable with it the longer they use it. Um, so I would echo um, what Ryan and Chris said in regards to the comfort level um, for our staff. We've had to have conversations about um, how often they should be putting scores in and then reiterating what those expectations are for sure. Um, it's definitely been uh, a learning experience uh, for the middle school report card. There have been multiple um, hiccups with it, especially in regards to unified arts classes. Um, first and foremost, the grades in the unified arts classes weren't um, calibrating correctly. And we stumbled on the fact that the quarters weren't correct in Alma. So the dates were wrong. So having that discussion with Alma to put our dates correct was, was one of the stumbles. And then going into um, Alma and really working with the folks at Alma because some of our classes like only run for a quarter. So our unified arts classes, the students don't have. So they didn't have it in quarter two. So it wasn't allowing us to even report for a report card on the student, it stopped us. So we've had to manually go in, I've had to act to go into every student and take them out of certain classes and put like not applicable into those to the quarters. So that's been kind of time consuming, but they're working with us on a way to kind of uh, streamline that problem. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I would say uh, from the high school perspective, you know, um, again, I've, I've been living and breathing Alma from the beginning, but I can say, you know, with regard to students, parents, teachers, um, everybody's comfort level is different. Um, we, uh, you know, over the last couple of weeks, you know, I had senior meetings with school counselors and seniors who might not be meeting a graduation requirement. So we were sending uh, letters home after meetings. And obviously that prompted parents to get concerned about grades because, you know, um, obviously they want their their children to, to graduate. So, um, you know, that actually was good because that gave people uh, more incentive to really get into Alma and ask more questions, which only improved our ability to, um, as, as a whole staff, to, to utilize it. And um, Principal Stack the other day figured out how to uh, run a um, report for the entire school in terms of student who are not um, passing a class and then send out uh, emails uh, to those parents. So that also triggered uh, parental response, but also more questions. And I think it also, in some cases, identified, you know, some, some teachers who may have had some minor uh, issues with their alma pages. So, you know, it's a process for getting there, but I think everybody is, and by everybody, I literally mean everybody, students, parents, teachers, everybody is, is um, we're, we're getting there. So um, it's, it's just gonna take a little bit of time. So, okay, so are there any questions? Uh, Jamie? Um, a, a few items. Could we get the screen back up? When we went over to the, um, the grading listing, I saw things that I'm not familiar with and I didn't see things that I thought I would see. In oh, the grading key? Yeah. 
Okay, so you want to go back into the Alma system. I just want to make you, sure I'm going in the right direction. You yep. Could, please. Yep. So if we go back to classes. So the grading key <clears throat> gives us the abbreviation and the level. And then these range numbers are things that you're not familiar with. Um, and what those are used for is when we do grading um, and we try to calculate a grade. And like I said earlier, let me just close this or I'll move this. I can't move it. Let me close it. And I, I can explain this a little bit. And this is where we get into a little bit of complicated calculations, but it's learning trend calculations. If you take a look at this particular competency, multiply and divide within 100 for Pugsley, we see he's got two attempts to show whether or not he's mastered that competency, whether he's showing mastery. What ends up happening over time, and let's say this were to draw out, say, three or four months, and we continue to assess how he's doing on that particular competency. The more attempts that Pugsley has to learn that material and to show that he's actually learning that material, the assessment gets weighted higher because he's had more time with the material. So it's like when you go on a driving test and the first time the, the driving instructor says, go do a K turn and you plow yourself into a snowbank and it just doesn't work. Well, obviously it's not gonna do too well because this is the first time you're trying it. But the more times you practice doing a K turn, by the time you're ready for your actual driving test to get your license, you should be really good at it. And the same thing goes with the way that the grades are calculated. And so in that grading key, initially you're not going to be calculating that grade the same way as you would the more attempt over time that that child has for that particular competency. So that's why we tell our teachers, make sure that your competencies are very clear. And we, we work every year on cleaning up our competencies and making sure that they're very direct to what um, they're measuring. But also you should be assessing those competencies multiple times. You can't assess something once and say, yep, you got it or you don't have it. You've got to give those students multiple attempts to show you that they're growing. And once they've mastered that, you know they've mastered it, you can move on to something else. So it assures that you're not spending a lot of time in class teaching something that they already know. And we can spend time teaching things that they're struggling with or that they need to know. So that, that generates another question, but so First, let me go to, I see an IWS, I'm not familiar with that. I see a New York City, NYC, I'm not familiar yep. with that. And what I don't okay. see is NP, not proficient. So this is the elementary rubric, which is a little different from the middle school rubric or the high school rubric. And like I said, this was a dummy class. So there are some things in here that you wouldn't normally see in your own student's grade book. But IWS stands for insufficient work shown. And that would show up at the end of a term. Let's say it's a one semester class in a high school or the end of the year, and they just haven't done enough work or they've been out. Let's say maybe they had to have appendicitis surgery and they were not done yet. Instead of saying they haven't met proficiency, we say they haven't shown us enough work for us to assess whether or not they've learned that. NYC stands for not yet competent. And that's another way of saying that that child still hasn't quite grasped that concept. So we're going to go back and revisit that. But those are end of course grades that would not come if I give them a test on multiplying two digit numbers. I'm not gonna say NYC because if you're still not understanding it and it's February 10th, Tomorrow, I'm gonna to sit there and I'm gonna help you learn and we're gonna reteach and then we're gonna assess you again and we're gonna see how you're doing and then we're gonna reteach some more and we're gonna give you more practice. So those last two, those IWS, insufficient work shown and NYC not yet competent would be end of year or end of semester if it's a one semester class grades to give folks a chance to sort of get their bearings and figure out what's really going on. So let me, one of the things that Tom mentioned last time in the last ESA meeting 
was, uh, you know, show the template and get our feedback. So some of my feedback would be, I, I think the template is, is, is very well laid out, very helpful, uh, gives a lot of information, more than we have today, uh, and, and helps guide forward. So I think that that's, that's great. Um, some things that, that I, I know it would be helpful to me as a parent. Um, if there was also, you got different tabs for class or what have you, a tab for homework. What are the homework assignments? What is supposed to be being done? And a tab for parents of, I don't know what you'd call it, parent assistant, uh, parent support, parent, you know, what is a teacher asking of the parents? Parent can, can, this is what you could do to help the education of your child. You know, can you get them to read a, a, a book at home? You know, whatever that, that might be, uh, that would be helpful for parents to be getting keyed in. The, 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 the teacher is pointing some things out that you could do to help the situation as a parent. I think that would be helpful. Um, it would be nice to know where they fall. So if I'm seeing a row of IPs, my first inclination is, all right, you're grounded until you're 412 and you know all these other things. Um, but it might be that everybody in class has got IPs on this item. And then it'd be helpful to know that piece. So, you know, if you, if we were mathematical, so one of the feedbacks would be, what would I like to see? I'd like to see A, B, C, D, and F based upon mathematics. And then you could say in mathematics, this is the percentile that you've fallen. I mean, the, the, the number you could then figure out where you're doing and if you're falling behind what you need to do as a parent to try to keep it up. But um, I thought overall, I, I think the template is is very well construed. It is very well laid out. It seems to be very easy to move through. So uh, I think that's um, I think that's quite good. So just a couple of things. I'm gonna. I hate bouncing back and forth to share the screen here, but just a couple of things. So as far as um, homework and things like that, what you would see in here, and like I said, this was. This is a dummy class. I didn't set this up the way teachers would normally do this. I wanted to do this for demonstration purposes. But upcoming assignments, the assignments would be listed here. And the teachers might even label this as HW homework or what's coming up. So those kinds of things. Um, and then there would also be, I just saw it here. If you go to the home tab, or was it uh, calendar? Nope, Pugsley. All right. So. There is a place in here, I just, I, I honestly just saw this, where there's a bulletin that would have announcements for um, a way for, par for parents and teachers to communicate, sort of a teacher communication of, hey, we're just starting our unit on geography. We just gave our first assessment. Students are learning the difference between um, cardinal directions and how to use the compass rows those kinds of things. So that might be one way to get at um, wondering how to help your child. So that could be a way to help with the communication. There was a place in here where it said bulletin and I can't find it to help me. So I just saw it too. I think when, when I talk to teachers, one of the things they point out on a regular basis would be, well, yeah, but you know, parents, parents have a role in this too. And, and parents are, aren't holding up their end of the bargain. Uh, right. They might not say that directly, but there's a sense of frustration that, you know, I, I'm a teacher, I'm a, I'm a, a helper, I'm a friend, I'm a psychologist, I'm a parent, I'm, I'm you know, all these different things. Uh, and it would be nice to be able to, particularly with a tool like this, to be able to solicit parents and say, you know, this, this would be helpful. You, so you, here's, where, here's where the bulletin is. I'm sorry to need to cut you off, but I- No, that's I, fine. I found it again. So this, it, where it says test, please ignore, this would where, this is where it would say math or social studies or French. And then this would be where the grades are. We saw this, but over here is the bulletin. And in here, the teachers could write, hey, we just started a unit on conjugating French verbs, or this is what we're working on. So that's a place where parents could look. There's a lot of nooks and crannies and places to find information. And this bulletin tab would be one place that we could list some of that stuff. So the principals could definitely take that back as um, helpful advice for teachers and communicating with families. Thank you. John. 
Um, so I wanted to point out um, there is also an app for this. You can download the app to get into Alma. Um, I have that on my phone and I go in there. It is, you still have to log into it every single time. It will not save your username and password, <laughs> but that's all right. Um, that's so the kids can't go in and do something. <laughs> they can't do anything in there. Um, but I, my feedback would be is I would like to see, and I know this is all brand new and being rolled out, but I would like to see there being a minimum standard for what is put in by teachers because you're going to have some teachers that are going to put in they're going to scan in documents they're going to put in lots of feedback and you're going to have other teachers that aren't and parents are going to get really frustrated and be like how come I'm not getting any of this so I would love to see a minimum yeah. standard of what should be put in there for feedback it doesn't need to be every assignment but if there could at least be a minimum standard um you know, of, you know, if there are three assignments, at least one of the assignments has some feedback on it, um, you know, or for every few writing assignments, at least one piece gets scanned in. Um, so parents can actually see, because like I said, there will be some teachers that are going to, you know, they're super tech savvy. They're going to have this, they're going to rock it. And there are others that are, you know, definitely going to struggle. And I can respect that. Um, but it would just be nice to have some sort of consistency throughout um, for parents so that we're not going, how come I got nothing? And others are going, I have everything. Um, so it'd be nice to see something there. Um, and then I know you had mentioned that IWS is, and I don't know if anything has changed, but from my experience, IWS is have, I've seen them and had them in my students. Jamie can't hear me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um, from my students experience, experience I've seen IWS is put on actual assignments um so I want to I don't know if that's not still current this year but I just want to clarify that I have seen that before so it, it is possible to see an IWS on an assignment um it's not necessarily just an end of year thing um I don't want parents going in and going how come I have an IWS that's only supposed to be the end of the year I don't know if something's changed. I don't know. Maybe you can check and correct me if I'm That's wrong. That's a but... conversation we have to have and we've been having continuously. Yeah. Um, and one of the, the so there's, there's a couple of things. One of the hurdles we have and we will continue to have is we have new teachers every year. And so it's sort of like, oh, well, this is equivalent to this. And, and it's really hard to um, get everybody up to speed all at the same time. The IWS is not supposed to be used on an assignment that's not finished. You're supposed to grade the assignment for what you've got. It might be limited proficiency. It might be, you know, in progress, whatever it is. And the student then needs to have that opportunity to be retaught or re, or re, I don't know, have a conversation, whatever it is, coach, whatever it is, and then try it again. So these are like pieces that we're, we're working on continuously um, with that. The other piece with your standards of feedback, I really do like that. Um, and that's something we're going to be looking at. Keep in mind for some things, and I think I mentioned it, it's easier to scan in writing samples than it might be math. Or my science experiment, I can't scan in my egg that you know didn't make it in the parachute kind of a thing. But there might be so there's things that we would have to have conversations with the teachers about what makes sense to actually have samples of what makes sense to have maybe just the graded rubric that has the teachers circles and notes on it. Um, maybe it's pictures I know in the elementary level they're using seesaw and they take a picture of look at this thing that you know here's the picture of my egg parachute and how you know it didn't survive kind of a thing so we need to figure out what makes sense for folks to do too and how much of that. Um, gets done each week, each month, each marking period. So absolutely, yes. Yeah, and, and that's the biggest thing for me, sorry, is the consistency across the board when it comes to grading and, you know, inputting. Yeah. Um, that's, that's for the parents, that's really, really important. And if it's all right, I'll just jump in real quick. Um, and, and, and Don, I think you did hit on something that maybe needs a further discussion as far as consistency goes. You know, it goes without saying that we are in a, a unique year, 
Um, and, and this fall in particular presented a number of challenges. You know, one of the things that I've noticed at Memorial, and I, I imagine that the other principals may echo, is, is that, you know, between the remote start where we had that six or seven weeks of students being out, um, we had kind of a rash of quarantines um, that came through in November, December, and we had the end of the first trimester kind of soon after that. Um, there were students that based on extenuating circumstances, it wasn't that um, there, there was just missing work, there was missing assignments, I, I think is, is the, the best way to put it. And so you can't say in, pro in progress when you don't have the evidence to say that. So I do think that some teachers put that IWS in perhaps it's like a placeholder, for example, to say that I, I can't give feedback necessarily for this assignment at this time, it's the end of the trimester. So something has to go in there. Um, so that, that IWS may have been, you may see it more than like as an end of year grade this year, just again, based on some of the circumstances that, that we've been dealing with. Yeah, and I can completely respect that. And I, at this point, you know, personally, I don't expect anyone to have this figured out or completely consistent this year at all. I mean, that's, this year has been crazy nuts and I'm just grateful that our students are learning. Um, but when I was mentioning the IWSs, I guess I was talking more in past years. I've seen it used quite a bit, um, especially with my older daughter. Um, so it's, it's something that has not been consistently used as an end of year, end of you know trimester, quarter, whatever grade. Um, it's been just kind of thrown in throughout the year. Um, so I guess that's where I would just like to see some more consistency across the board because it hasn't been that way for quite a while. I agree. I've seen it used at the high school too, but I also just wanted to chime in that you make a great point both you and Jamie have made some really good points. Everyone here is making great points. And it, the, the, real, the real process that's occurring, well, there's two levels of process that's going, that are going on. One is the, the grading system level. Uh, how does it work? How do we put stuff in? How do we do assignments? How do we communicate with parents, right? The, the surface. But underneath that is the consistency of, I would take it one step further, Don. It's not just the consistency of the what's going into the system, which is super important. It's actually the consistency of how grading is happening across the district. And so we, we need to go another level deeper because really we need to have conversations about how our assessments are informing instruction, which goes back to some of Jamie's points when, when I first met him, which I agree with completely data is only as good as its accuracy and how it's used to make decisions about how to move forward. That's what data does. If you don't have it accurate, you can't make decisions about how to move forward. And the data needs to inform our decisions about how we teach kids, not just telling mom and dad whether or not we're doing well. Right? So it's, it's like, there's a lot of work here to do to shift. And, and, and I, I do, want to continue to just listen to your feedback because what Patty and I talked about at length over the last two weeks between this meeting and the previous meeting, um, specifically in the last couple of weeks, Patty and I have been talking about how to, the, the, the number one thing that I've received from parents and Dawn, you were at a lot of those Friday coffee meetings with parents just saying, I don't understand what's being sent home to me. I don't get it. Right. And part of it was, it was just too darn long. It was too many pages with too much information. And it, I understand what the intent was, but it wasn't, it wasn't connecting with parents. So what Patty and I talked about was that this simple document, I wanted one sided single sheet of paper. She's like, I can get you to maybe one and a half to two. And so I, I, you know, I, I was shooting for one, but she, she pushed back in one, which is fine. And, and I, I think that it's great the way it looks, but, but it is designed to be an impetus for communication with the parent. And I feel like that communication happens on two levels. One is indirect, where you click on the button and look at what's going on in the course right in Alma. That's indirect, right? And then also, we haven't really talked about the direct communication, which is you email the teacher because you're like, I don't know what's going on with my kid's grade in Alma. 
but I need some help here. And, and trust me, as a parent with a seventh grader who loves to say, my work's all done so he can go do something else during this remote period, I'm doing a lot of that direct communicating lately. So, so I think that, that based on what I've seen, even with my own son has for a system uh, compared to what we're looking at, this is way better. Is it gonna be perfect? No, but we do need to be really explicit about what we expect, not only how we set it up, but our expectations. What do we expect parents to do with it? What do we expect teachers to do with it? And what do we expect to be monitored and how do we expect it to change our teaching? And that's the work of the next few months and that, that will help us. But I just want everyone to just have realistic expectations themselves that this process will go on for another year and a half of continually whittling it down and working with it. It'll be more intense for the next three months or four months. So we really do need to talk right in this committee about what, what will teachers, what level will it go to? What will the minimum expectation be? And then we need to talk about how we're going to get that up and running for next year. And then we need to continue to monitor it and tweak it throughout next year. The other piece to just um, keep in mind too, coming down the road for August, September, when we start school next year, is we will have the student information system portion of Alma added to this. So that's gonna be a place where our parents will, and Chris alluded to this earlier with additional training for our um, administrative assistants and, and receptionists, parents will be able to go in, put in the information to put all of their students in instead of having to hand fill out 75 forms. If you have the Brady Bunch, you know how much your hand hurts after that. You'll be able to go into the computer, put all the information in, it's all in there. Um, and we'll, we'll have better probably scheduling um, so that probably Christine won't have the issues she's having with classes on, classes off, because the schedule will be in there. Everything will be in there. And then we're also going to have the component of the curriculum storehouse so that we'll be able to link all of things right, right together. It's all going to be talking to it itself. And um, so those pieces are also coming in next year. So it's really, it's a growing, growing uh, component for us. Don't, don't forget that it also will house the, the, the essence of the curriculum eventually. So it'll have the student information yeah. system, the grading, and the planned curriculum all in Alma. That would be like by the end of year three, roughly, right? I mean, it's a long time to, we're, we're engaging right now in that process of, with math in particular, looking at which, what do we want students to know and be able to do at the end of each year and what program will help us to meet that. Um, and so I, for K-8, and then for 9-12, Grace is working hard on that. That would be the place that, that I would think that we would start with putting curriculum into Alma, but we need to discuss that here in the future. But it, but just remember that, that Alma is a lot more than just grading software. It does, it, it's, this is a, this is a big process of basically making this kind of the, 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 the nervous system of our, our school district. It will have all the different pieces from the teaching and learning to the reporting to the student information all housed in one spot. If they could just collect the lunch money too, I'd be totally in but I'm not sure they can collect lunch money. There's a whole backstory to lunch money that the folks in the committee may not know, but tracking down folks who owe you lunch money is a real pain for the administrators. And so we're trying to see if Alma can help us track down our lunch money. From a, now that you mentioned that Tom, with all the information that's gathered, I think as a board, we're gonna have to have some type of a privacy and data cleansing policy. Uh, how long do these records stay? When did, you know, how long after they exit, do they get, uh, do they get cleaned? I mean, it's an awful lot of information being gathered from children all the way from pre-K to 12. Yeah. Um, and there are people that sometimes like to use data in inappropriate ways. So, I mean, yes. there's, there's got to be a privacy plan associated with this as we're gathering, to gathering data to help the kids during their educational process. Um, that's not a property that we can then market or somehow use to financially benefit the district or any other means of that sort. I mean, this is their personal information. We already have a, a, a data, a, a records retention policy, Jamie, that addresses that. And it's very specific and based on law. 
You can find it in the uh, in the manual. If you have trouble, I'll, I'll look it up and see if I can send it to you. I'll, I'll take a look for it. Yeah, it's pretty pretty straight ahead. It basically tells you how many years certain records have to be kept based on law. Okay, I'm going to jump in here because we only have nine minutes left um, of our meeting time, and I don't want to lose track of. Uh, I still want to definitely get an update uh, from the diploma schedule committee there. Um, so, if, um, if there's nothing else really pressing on this particular topic, I think we'll move on. Okay. Agenda item two. So Matt? Matt, you wanna just give us an update on the uh, graduation requirement committee? Absolutely, so about two weeks ago, we had our first meeting, um, which was probably the first time I've run a committee this large via Zoom. So it's a new experience and it's definitely different on Zoom, but um, we, we met, did all the typical stuff in the first meeting, but, um, you know, ultimately after reviewing our goals or objectives and timeline, you know, we really came up with a plan for how we want to tackle our primary task, which is really to review and re revise our graduation requirements and our diploma of distinction, which is going to drive a bunch of other changes down the road. So to get there, we decided we were going to form three subcommittees, which we did. Um, the first uh, committee, not that they're numbered or anything, but is a uh, career committee, which is looking at our graduates who go directly into the workforce. Uh, are they prepared? You know, what are their strengths? You know, what could we do better for those students? Uh, the second subcommittee is a post-secondary committee that's looking at our students who are going into college or vocational schools. Um, you know, what can we do, do better to, to serve them, um, to prepare them for, for those, those endeavors after, after graduation. And the last committee is looking at other schools. Um, what, what are their graduation requirements? Do they have something like a diploma with distinction? Uh, you know, so what do they do? Just to give us some ideas as, as we, um, you know, review, review our, our, our um, program. So, you know, right now um, we, we've set up folders electronically. There's a lot of resources there. People are doing background, um, you know, reading and research now. Uh, they're reviewing kind of critical documents like our program of studies, which will give them um, information on what our current um, graduation requirements are, what our current diploma of distinction um, includes. But also things like, um, you know, we all really need to look at the, um, the portrait of a graduate um, that was produced last year. Um, I think it was finalized right before COVID and that really should drive everything we're doing because that's really our vision as a community of what um, our graduates um, should possess uh, for skills and, and you know, what, what type of citizens they should be when they leave um, Sanborn. So, uh, and there's other 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 resources too that we're reviewing. So um, you know, our next meeting is um, is in about two weeks, and um, you know from there we'll we'll have a strategy to um, you know to move forward. But um, any any questions from the committee? I know a couple of a couple of folks here are on the that committee, but uh, Tammy, do you have any questions? I, I would like to know who is on the committee if I. Good. It's a large committee. Um, it's expanded. <laughs> so there's about um, seven, seven teachers, uh, all from different departments. Um, I could rattle off names, but I might forget a few. You, would you like to know their names? I, could you put something in writing and circulate it? I would like to know who's yep. on the committee. But I, I, mean, don't I, could, I could call it up if you want to know. Let me just see here. All righty, here we go. These are in alphabetical order, it's off, off my agenda. So, um, you know, so we have Carrie Alley, who's a teacher, uh, Liz Beebe, who's a staff member and also a parent community member, uh, Kevin Conant, teacher, Don Dutton, uh, Grace Evans, who you all know, Jamie Fitzpatrick, uh, Jody Gutter Gutterman, who's a special administrator, 
uh, Ashley Harbel, teacher, Donna Harvey, teacher, Patty Hay Haynes, uh, Julie Healy, special ed teacher, uh, Steve Krasinowski, assistant principal, uh, Jennifer Lampron, who's a parent, uh, Shannon Varney, who's a parent, uh, Heidi Levitt, who's our uh, director of guidance to high school, um, Megan Petruzzi, who's a science teacher, and Aaron Smith Davis, who is a uh, music, music teacher, and then myself. So um, it's, it, the committee was initially gonna be about 10 to 12, and then for various reasons, it kind of swelled up, but not a bad thing. We have good representation, I think. Could you email that list to me, please? Yeah, sorry. I would like to have the list. But anyway, I, again, I've, I've been, I'm, you know, being the chair, you know, I, I've been getting, you know, emails, communication from, from members independently and everybody I, I really honestly believe is in it for the right reasons in it for our kids. I think we're gonna do some great work um, and really, you know, hopefully evolve, you know, Sam Warren High School's experience, you know, to, to a higher place, um, you know, it's it's great now, but we, you know we can do better, and that's really the the, the objective of this committee is to um, you know create the best experience possible for the you know students of our district. Okay. We'll look for an update from you at our next meeting. Yeah, there'll be a little bit more uh, next meeting. After the next meeting, there'll be a little bit more, I guess, you know, work completed. Again, we're kind of still in information gathering phase right now and research. So it's there's not a lot to have many decisions made or anything or any anything produced yet. Yeah, matches are being gathered. There's no sparks yet. Okay. Anything else? We have, I will have to, I put on here for our next meeting date, TBA, because as like I brought up at our last meeting with the election and that sort of throws things into a little bit of a black hole. Um, I'm not sure what our, when our next meeting date is going to be. I would like, would, I think we want to meet in March. We have a target to have yep. Patty present the some information to us on the math curriculum. Yep, that will be, you'll get a report. We will have um, the committee, the math committee's um, conclusions and that should be ready for March, so. Did you have your hand up, Tom? Yeah, I was gonna propose March 17th because it's St. Patrick's Day and I knew that Jamie would love that. Um, I was thinking 8.30 at night at the high school. That could work. I could be back by then. <laughs> uh, no, let, let's set a meeting. Let's set a meeting. And if we need to change or move it, we'll do it. But if we don't set a meeting, I'm worried that it's not going to happen, Tammy. Does anyone oppose that? I, I just want to meet. I want to talk about this. We have a math program to choose. And Matt, Matt is working very hard to get the high school piece moving. But the first few meetings are information gathering and decision making. So it, it, if we can get the math part done, then when Mr. Malilla is ready for the next phase of the high school part, this committee will be ready to discuss, right? So I wanna keep, I, I would like to keep things moving. Um, I would too. Uh, <clears throat> the election is on the 9th. I think the next board meeting after the election isn't until the 17th. Is it on St. Patrick's Day for real? There I'm assuming board. that's the third, third, that's the third Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm, not looking at my I'm not looking at my board meeting calendar, but. Sorry. There, ha there has been the undue influence tried to be used with the chair of the board to see if that could be another day. I'll just. Uh -huh. I'll well, just why don't we meet on the 24th then? And, and, and uh, <laughs> why don't we meet on the 24th at 430 and then that way we're safe. Let me check. I'm, I'm good. good. My calendar, that should be fine. That certainly works for me. I'm good with yep. that. All right, so we'll, we'll do the 24th at 4.30 because 
I have a feeling that that undue influence may affect the 17th and we may end up meeting on the 24th, but we have to look at the, the timeline, Mr. Fitzpatrick, set by the policy. Board between the election and our meeting because we have to exactly. elect a chair and the chair has to, you know, appoint us back onto this committee. So I'm just saying. I'll yeah. work something out. It gets a little tight. Let's shoot for the 24th and I'll see what we can do. How's that? Sounds good to me. Okay, anything else before we adjourn and we have to head over to the high school for our board meeting at six o'clock. Great okay. work, everyone. Thank you. Great job, Patty. Thanks for working so hard on that Alma presentation. It was excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. We're, we're go I'm going to have Dan or um, Gordon snip out the piece where I was presenting, and we're just going to have it live by itself so that parents can view it at any time. All right. Great. On a Facebook link coming to you next. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. We're adjourned.